Hello. Uh, today is Monday. Uh, it's April 18th. And welcome to Commissioner in a Car. My name is Dustin Zarni. I'm the Democratic Elections Commissioner uh, for Onondaga County. And uh, today, uh, this week, uh, is a pretty packed week uh, for elections here in Onondaga County. Um, this is really the week where we're going to start doing some objections to the designating petitions that were filed uh, uh, by April 7th. Um, in that first week after April 7th, uh, general objections are usually filed and specifications will start to come in now. Uh, we, in fact, we got a couple on Friday and uh, we'll see if any more come in later today. But um, the specifications come in starting at the end of last week and the beginning of this week. And that's the same with the State Board of Elections. So what's the difference between a general objection and a specific objection? Well, a general objection is just a placeholder objection. It just says, hey, uh, we don't, we're not sure about this petition. We want six more days to take a look at it. And then sp specific objections are objections that say, we believe this uh, objection is uh, wrong and, uh, and, and it should be. Uh, or this petition is wrong, and here's all the reasons why it's wrong. And 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 then over the next week or so, the boards of election, state board and local board of election, will look at those specific objections, rule on them, have what's called a preliminary ruling, and then a hearing date. After the hearing date at the Onondaga County Board of Election, uh, that we will uh, rule on it right away. Uh, and at the state board of elections, they will have a hearing and have the commissioners rule on it on May 2nd. Uh, you can see who got objected to both at the state board of elections and Onondaga County Board of Elections by going to their individual websites, onvote.net for Onondaga County, and the, just Google New York State Board of Elections or NYSBOE, uh, I think it's .net, uh, it may be something different. So Google the New York State Board of Elections. Uh, and they have, um, you can look up a race and see if it got objected to and, and all of that. Um, right now, as of the time of recording this, uh, I believe the only ones that got objected to at Onondaga County Board of Elections were some committee petitions for the Pompey Republicans. There seems to be a, a little primary going on out in Pompey where uh, two different slates of Republicans are going for committee slots. So this happens every two years. Uh, sometimes Democrats have it, sometimes Republicans have it. This year it seems to be out with Republicans, so there's some spe specifics. I haven't even looked at the specifics. Uh, I will do so this week. Uh, we will set a hearing next week. Um, the, today's the last day for specifics to come in for s some of the... Uh, the la the filers on the last day of uh, petition, so we'll see if any more come in. I don't really comment on uh, objections and specifications that are before my office until my office makes a ruling. Uh, but again, you can go to onvote.net and see who made the pet the objections and to what petitions. If you go to the uh, the petition filing session uh, section. Uh, in the filings section on the website, you can see that. Uh, so tomorrow, <laughs> David got ahead of me, David. Tomorrow starts independent nominating petition. So what is that? That is, um, if you are not running as part of a party, or if you're running for a second line that is not a part of a party, you can pass independent nominating petitions. And the people who didn't sign, uh, uh, the Democratic petitions or Republican or working families or conservatives can sign your petition and you can make up a party name and be on there. There's a, a few things going around. This is the Greens and Libertarians have said that they're going to walk petitions statewide to get on the ballot uh, for governor. So they can and if they get on the ballot for governor and they get so many votes, then then they'll have a recognized party line again. I think it's, it's going to be somewhere around 150,000, 160,000 votes uh, to do that. So we'll have to see if they are able to establish themselves and uh, get on the ballot. First thing is getting on the ballot. Second thing is getting that many votes. Um, 
there seems to be a controversy brewing uh, in Democratic circles, and I'll be honest, I don't understand why. Uh, the Kathy Hochul has said that she might be doing another uh, uh, line, and some Senate Democrats will be joining her, where they might be running on a, another party line. That doesn't mean that they're leaving the Democratic Party. It just means that they're they're running on a second line. In New York, we have fusion voting, and all of the the lines are fused together for your win total uh, during election. That's why you see Republicans running on the conservative line, Democrats running on the working families line. However, you may notice that the working families hasn't always endorsed uh, the one the people running on the Democratic line, uh, and so many times Democrats will go out and get another. Uh, uh, another line. Uh, so we'll have to see if the Democrats go out and do that. And I think they're calling it the fair deal line. And we'll have to see um, what that turns into. They may just be on the ballot another time. If they get 150,000 votes, they might become another party. But a lot of progressives I've noticed have likened this to the IDC, which it has nothing to do with that. The IDC was an independent Democratic coalition in the Senate that caucused with the Republicans. This is just another line on the ballot. And if you don't like that, then you should be against fusion voting, uh, which allows candidates to have their names appear multiple times on the ballot and under different party lines and have those uh, lines together. Uh, and most notably for governor and state Senate, they can have as many lines as they wish. Uh, they don't have to have um, just the two major party lines. Every other candidate can only have two lines on the ballot if they are major party lines. They would not allow a third independent nominating line. But state Senate and governor are allowed that. So um, when we saw this with uh, Robert Antonacci, uh, with the Upstate Jobs Party, um, I, I believe when he was running for state Senate in 2018, he had the conservative and the Republican line here locally, and then filed petitions to run for the upstate jobs party. Uh, he got on the ballot on that. Also, Ryan McMahon, who was the count running for county executive in 2019, tried to do that as well. However, in 2019, when he was running for uh, county executive, um, he is not a state senator. And so, so, and he had the conservative and Republican line. So the upstate jobs party rolled up to his line. Uh, so, uh, that is, uh, you know, so now Kathy Hochul and, and some state senators are thinking about doing that to have a third line on the ballot that is not. Uh, just to the working families and Democratic line. And in Kathy Hochul's case, she's not endorsed by the working families line. So she's actually looking for a second line on the ballot. So uh, that is uh, something that uh, is, uh, you know, I, I don't know, understand why it's so controversial. I don't believe it is. It is normal. And then if you're against it, you should be against fusion voting altogether. Judith Jerome in the chat said, I think ranked choice voting would do more do away with all of this confusion, fusion voting, etc. What do you think? No, I actually don't. Uh, in fact, I think fusion voting makes ranked choice voting nearly impossible. Um, so that's why in New York City you see ranked choice voting, but it's on the primary level where you're making decisions within a party as opposed to at the general election where somebody is uh, whose name is appearing multiple times. Uh, you would, I don't know any way to really do that with fusion voting. Um, there are some changes to fusion voting that would make it easier. Uh, I personally believe it should be eliminated. If you're running a candidate, you should choose which party line that you're running on. And, uh, that is the candidate or that is the party that you're running on that day. And that's, that should be it. However, if you are a, uh, if you do choose, uh, you know, if you want some form of fusion voting, I'd rather have a fusion voting with names on the ballot and then party symbols next to the name. That way you can have as many party symbols as you want, but your name would only appear once and not multiple times. That is something that I think is very confusing to voting voters. So 
I would like to see that as a as a, a solution to fusion voting. So, as I said, this week is a is a big week uh, for elections. Uh, we have the other a there will be another primary uh, for the congressional uh, offices. Whether the maps stand and whether that if they decide to decline the maps, they may not decide to have a primary a second primary this year. They may decide to just wait till 2024, um, and that's when uh, they will redraw maps in the interim and then have new maps then. And, of course, they could decide that the maps are valid, and um, I think we saw some, uh, you know, notable arguments that the, the Assembly and State Senate maps are not gerrymandered um, and may be allowed to be stand, but the congressional maps are ones that they're... Um, really looking at for democratic bias and gerrymandering. And we'll have to see what they do, uh, what the appellate division does, and then expect a quick appeal uh, to the Court of Appeals. And then, then uh, we'll have a final decision. So we still got a couple weeks here to go on redistricting, but stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be busy. And uh, as soon as there's some decisions and news to share, of course, I will be bringing it to you. Uh, this week, uh, I'm going to be finishing up my City of Syracuse Wonky Wednesdays this Wednesday with the City of Syracuse uh, Common Council District 5. Uh, and that that's all because next week are the final two pre-draft uh, uh, hearings for the Sy City of Syracuse um, Independent Redistricting Commission. So if you haven't gone to those, April 24th, at Corcoran High School, April 28th at Nottingham High School. Go to those meetings and share your thoughts on what is your your neighborhood and what do you want to see in your district. Um, and then they'll be releasing draft maps. Uh, April. So Wednesday, I'll be doing my final uh, Common Council District 4. I mean, 5. I already have District 4 up. Uh, I, I will not be doing a Zoom with Zarni on Friday, uh, that, and that is because on Sunday I'll be doing this month's uh, Sunday seminar, and we'll be talking about uh, absentee balloting in New York and what is different uh, uh, for this year. For And there's a lot of big differences with absentee balloting in New York, so tune into my Sunday seminar on Sunday. Uh, and then next week I will come, Zoom with Zarni will come back, and I will uh, have Jeff Weiss, who's one of the f nation's foremost redistricting uh, experts, and definitely here in New York State. We've had him on the uh, on on before, and we'll be talking about the fallout of whatever the decision may be this week with New York redistricting. Uh, and then, uh, so check that out. And starting sometime in May, I'll start getting into candidate interviews with my Zoom with Zarni as we start getting ready for the election. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of candidates to talk to between May and November. Remember, I don't interview candidates on the Democratic line until after they've won their primary. So if you're tuning in looking for the congressional race, you're not going to get uh, any interviews on that because I wait until after the primary to talk to candidates that are involved in the primary. And the only primaries uh, on the local level are the congressional. And, of course, we have primaries for governor and lieutenant governor. And that finally leads me to the lieutenant governor situation. Brian Benjamin, uh, as you, as you know, last week, uh, was indicted and arrested for, uh, fraud charges related to campaign finance, uh, issues. Um, this is an unfortunate event, uh, and very unfortunate because he is remaining on the ballot despite suspending his campaign. And the reason he can't get off the ballot is in New York, uh, you can only get off the ballot if you've died, moved out of the state of New York, or um, if you are nominated for another office. And there are very small windows where you can decline the, uh, the uh, office, but for, for lieutenant governor, for the, um, uh, for the, uh, 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 for uh, his nomination, he was nominated at the state convention. And when you're nominated at the state convention and not during petitions, 
their time for declining that office was around the, the first couple of days of March. So since he did not decline the office back in March, um, and I, I'm, I, I obviously many of us wondering, knowing what was happening with this legal case, why he didn't do so, but he didn't do so. And uh, thus he is on the ballot. Uh, David in the chat says, will he just run for judgeship anywhere? Well, when you're under federal indictment, it's kind of hard to get a nomination for another office. And I think it would be hard pressed for the Democrats or Working Families Party to nominate him for anything without scandal. However, uh, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, who uh, um, has resigned uh, as well, um, he is not, so he's the former Lieutenant Governor, uh, he is not an attorney, so he can't run for judge uh, in, in anything but a town judgeship. Uh, and it's very, uh, and he's probably not going to be able to move, um, to move out because you're under federal indictment. So it's yet to be uh, seen whether any of that will happen. But it's highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. And uh, the New York State Senate uh, announced this week uh, that they would not be backing a bill that was being as introduced in the Assembly that would allow uh, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin to come off the ballot because he's been indicted. Um, I don't know about the merits of the bill, but um, I, I actually believe no one should. Um, uh, no one should. Uh, uh, be on the ballot that is no longer campaigning. I think we should have better rules of how to get somebody off the ballot if they wish to get off the ballot, which is probably the case here. He hasn't said so, but he suspe suspended his campaign. Um, but I think there is a, a lot of uh, worry that it would be it would look like uh, changing the rules in the middle of the game. Although this is not a game, I hate that expression when it comes to politics. This is. Serious work, and somebody who is who is indicted, uh, and 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 facing serious, especially campaign finance uh, charges, shouldn't be on the ballot. We shouldn't. The voters should not uh, be tempted to waste their vote uh, for someone who's not actually intending to campaign. So, um, so that does lead, and David put that in the chat as well. A little bit of a, um, a little bit of a. A question about the line of secession. Well, we've already had this question answered uh, when Go <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Hochul uh, assumed the duties of governor. Uh, she did not have to put in a lieutenant governor uh, because, um, and, and for several weeks, did not put in a lieutenant governor. Uh, and during that time, the line of secession falls to Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins. She is now the next in line if. Uh, Somehow, God forbid, Governor Hochul died or was incapacitated, and she would be the acting governor. Um, now, Lieutenant Governor, or I'm sorry, Governor Hochul can pick her lieutenant governor. That is well-established fact. It does not need to be uh, approved by the New York Senate. So if she decides to select another running mate, or, or I'm sorry, another uh, a lieutenant governor to serve out the term, that is something that she can do. But the interesting question is, because that person will not be on the ballot for lieutenant governor, they will not be on her ticket uh, when she, if she wins the primary for, for governor, um, you know, there are th two other candidates, Tom Swazi and Jamal Williams, that are running for, or I'm sorry, Jamani Williams, uh, who's running for uh, governor. Uh, they are running as well. And of course, if they win they'll win the governorship, but they have lieutenant governor candidates that are running. Uh, and uh, if one of those lieutenant governor candidates were able to beat Brian Benjamin and Kathy Hochul was able to win on the governor's line, then uh, that ticket would be fused together for the general election on the, on the, the December ballot. It's still questionable what would happen with the working families ballot as working families has, um, has designated Jamani Williams and may not be w willing to uh, designate Kathy Hochul, or in, and maybe they will. So I guess it really all depends on what will happen in June. But the uh, uh, the 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 uh, the people that are running are, you know, are are you know will be whoever wins lieutenant governor and governor will be on the Democratic ticket, and I think there'll be. 
you know, tremendous pressure for the working families to accept that ticket because if they don't get enough votes on the governor's line this year, they st- cease being a party. So um, we'll see what happens with that. And David, I, you know, last question in the chat. Oh, I got to get going. Um, you said they could pass an independent petition. I, I assume you're talking for the lieutenant governor. But the, if that's the case, if they pass an independent petition for the lieutenant governor, it would be on a different party line. And because of fusion voting, would not be on the Democratic line. And thus, on the general election, could not uh, be um, uh, fused with Kathy Hochul and win the lieutenant governorship. So that is um, not a uh, solution for the lieutenant governor uh, uh, portion of, of, of the ticket. So uh, if the lieutenant governor, or if the governor passes a third party line with these other senators, as they're talking about, I don't think lieutenant governor will be on there. Um, and, she, and, and I'm not sure she's going to select a lieutenant governor until after the primary. It would probably be better if she doesn't, um, but she might. You know, the business of the state must go on. So, uh, you know, politically, she can't worry about that. She has to decide that. So it's her decision, and if she makes a decision, I'll be here to let you know. Uh, But in the meantime, this week, big redistricting case on April 20th, Wonky Wednesday, uh, Common Council District 5, Sunday seminar, uh, how to vote by absentee in 2022. That's what I got going on this week. Go to DustinZarney.com and subscribe. And uh, I will get you all of your content and election information. And uh, in the meantime, please remember that cases are skyrocketing in Onondaga County again for COVID-19. Uh, over the last three weeks, hospitalizations have doubled. Syracuse University announced today that they are remasking, uh, going back to masking students inside classes because their cases have tripled. Uh, so we think that this virus is over all the time and it's not. I implore you to be careful out there. The first thing you can do, vaccinate it. And if you can, get boosted. And if you're over 50, get your second booster. These are the things that you can do that will help you the most. Also, wearing a mask indoors, um, although not mandated, is still recommended by the CDC in our county. I have decided to start wearing KN95 masks uh, whenever I can, especially when I am indoors and definitely when I'm Ubering. Uh, And yes, by the way, uh, transportation is still under a federal mandate. Uh, So uh, public transportation, buses, Ubers, Taxis and uh, planes, you still have to wear a mask when you're on them. So do your part. We are one of the worst uh, counties in America right now for transmission. And that's because we've been infected with the new strains, uh, which are even more infectious. And while um, they seem to be milder strains, our hospital rates are starting to go up again. And again, if beds become uh, alarmingly uh, you know, full, then other things start to falter in our health system. So please take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, get boosted, get vaccinated, and consider wearing a KN95 mask or an N95 mask in public uh, to reduce the spread and reduce your risk of uh, catching this disease. So thank you very much and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.